So anyway, the 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 next great Muta. Uh, it's actually Keiji Muto. That's the gimmick. Yes, the Keiji, Keiji Muto. Muto retirement the show will be at the Tokyo Dome on February twenty first. He will be facing Tetsuya Naito in his final match, and also on that show will be Okada versus Kato Kiyomiya, who is the NOAA champion, in a non-title match, champion versus champion. And uh, and this was set up this weekend when they were doing a tag match, and uh, Kiyomiya hit the ring and just freaking blasted this guy in the head with a kick as his arms were as his arms were uh, busy in a chin lock. Kiyomiya don't like them chin locks. It was like, come on, brother. He kicked him. And then they they uh, they had a brawl, and you know what? What it was it was awesome, but you know people are talking about it was the best but angle in years and everything like that. And listen, there I'm not saying is. it wasn't okay, but oh boy, but no, listen to me, listen uh, to me. God, I was really thinking about New Japan, okay, and. Uh, and it was like a it was a great angle, and it was their greatest angle in years. But I was really thinking about it. it and <laughs> What's the debate here? Then? Well, it's not a debate. But I, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. Okay. So one of the reasons that it was like the greatest angle that they have done in years. Okay. It's not only that it was great, but also, it's because they uh, get ready. They don't do that many angles, okay? Now, they do. They do a lot of angles. But when you think about it, it's like we're going to have, like, uh, in the month of January alone, we're going to have this same sort of deal. Like, you know, two people get into a brawl and it gets broken up by security. We're going we're gonna to have that, like, eight times between now and the end of January on Raw and SmackDown. And, uh, and the thing is... Like when you watch when you watch New Japan, Mike, and you watch Raw and SmackDown, and remember you asked me, you go, what was one of your favorite things about Raw back in the day? Right? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait till I get this comparison. I'm actually gonna tell you about one of the things I didn't like about Raw back in the day but in its own way reminds me of okada and kiyomi are you ready for this yes when papa shango put a curse on the ultimate warrior i hope this ties into evil and caused him to vomit blood now why do i mention that one Dick Togo. No, it sucked, okay? It was absolutely <laughs> horrible. Because it's something Gato would do right now that sucks. Hey, might, he might do something like that with evil. But the point is, <laughs> the point is, you know, I watched that, and if you were watching all of these 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 Raw shows and superstars or whatever, they replayed this stupid thing, like, uh, <laughs> for 12 straight weeks. I had to watch The Ultimate Warrior Vomit Green Goo for 12 straight weeks, over and over and over again. Because the thing was, back in the day when you watched Raw, they rarely shot an angle. Like, when they actually shot an angle on the show, it was like, wow, something happened on this show. And then, you know, you watch nowadays, and people go, hey, you can't do it like that anymore. There's so much television that, you know, you got to have five angles on every show, and you don't remember half of them or whatever. And it's like, you can't go back and... But you know what's funny? And this is the reason I'm tying it into this there's Okada thing. There's nothing funny with you today. You're a sour no, son of there's a, a bitch. No, there's a point about it. Yes. So people go, you can't book like that anymore. You you can't do it where like an angle happens every you know four weeks or whatever, and it's like a big deal. And then, but the fact of the matter is, New Japan kind of does that in the sense that the way that they set up big matches, the way they set up the Tokyo Dome, the way they set up all of that is via wins and losses. This person won the G1. This person had to defend the briefcase. There's a lot of that. So when you actually shoot a traditional raw style angle where, you know, the champion from the organization, he kicked the guy in the face and they had this big pull apart and everything. It's like, wow. 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 I can expand more after the break. God, did I use too many words or what? Nobody gets my point except me.
Well, keep expanding. I'm going to keep I'm going to simplify it. Listen. Go back to the Tokyo Dome. Mm-hmm. Tokyo Dome. What do we got? Well, this match here. What set up this match? Well, an this outsider. Match here. An outsider came in. What match? It doesn't matter. The point is, what set up this match? This guy won a tournament. He's getting a shot at the dome. What set up this match here? This is the finals of a tournament. What set up this match here? Uh, whatever. You know, my, my point is that when you have a promotion where you can set up major matches with wins and losses whether it's a tournament or whatever, when that is the primary way that you set up big matches, then when you do something in a different way, which is we're setting up this match because this guy shoot kicked a guy in the head and the match fell apart and it led to a DQ and they had a huge brawl and everybody got separated and everything like that, these angles are more meaningful. That's my point. WWE rarely sets up a match solely because, oh, this guy beat this guy, now he gets a match. It's always, this guy is mad at this guy. I'm going to cut a promo about how in NXT in 2016, you let, it's always, there's, and then they brawl, blah, blah, blah. When you, do, when you do an angle to set up every single match, then it really doesn't matter how good your angle is. Your angle has to be like a 500 for it to stand out from all of the other 85 angles. When you book in a different way, you can actually, in 2022, do something similar to what WWE used to do back in the day when it was all prelim matches, and every now and then you'd actually see an angle, and so it was memorable, even if it sucked. You can do that if you book the way New Japan books. Golly gee willikers. Holy smokes. So basically what you're advocating is logical and intelligent booking, which, yes, that should be well, what everybody what should Well, what I'm advocating be. is is also well, a, sports, a sport-based style of booking where it matters if you win and lose. You're and that exactly actually right. gets you places in this business. You're You're exactly right. And I'm not trying to disagree with your perspective on that at all because i agree with it wholeheartedly but i think what is more important here is the fact that they actually did something and they actually called back to the past and they did something creative with their roster and they did something creative with another company other than their own and that's been the thing since the pandemic started when gato really who has been arguably tired for quite some time when you look at the Bullet Club, when you look at the entirety of things, not to bag on his entire run by any means, but it's almost like a head coach in sports where it's like, okay, what are you going to do here to freshen things up to keep things going? Because otherwise, I mean, they were in an incredible rut. And the buildup to the Dome kind of exemplified that. It was very pedestrian. It was a very good Dome show, but it was a very pedestrian way to get there. They've been needing to do something for quite some time, and very simply doing something so simple as this was a great start. And I think just the it beginning with the invasion of Keno and Congo and the whole group where there were no cameras behind, not at least while the live broadcast was going on, and they make the challenge to LIJ and they start it that way. Oh, my God, we got something going on here. And for both New Japan and NOAA, they needed to start this year off with a bang because they are jettisoning their past. They are jettisoning the 50th year and all the pandemic stuff and everything that they've New Japan's had to fight through. Muda and all of his friends, Funaki and Kaz Fujita and all that stuff. They're trying to push some of that away and bring Kiyomiya out. I think this is great for both parties. And I think it's just something so simple that... You're exactly right. You know, just call back to the past. Call back to some of the things that are tried and true that work. Update them for modern times. And what a surprise if you don't do them too often, they're they're probably going to work again. Everyone's bringing up the Royal Rumble. Yes, the Royal Rumble is a tournament to determine a a challenger for WrestleMania. But it doesn't have to be. But what is it? I mean, it's like, okay, let's say Cody wins, okay? The Cody's win is not what's going to set up the main event at WrestleMania. They're going to have to 
heat it up or something. He's going to have a brawl with Roman Reigns. He's going to be in a tag match, and they're going to beat him up. They're, I mean, there's going to be, they're going to do a million angles between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania to try to get heat on this match. And when you do that, it's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, is is any one of those 85 brawls between now and WrestleMania going to really stick out as, as any more important or bigger than any of the others? Probably not, because they do that stuff all the time. Yeah, and that's why it stands out when you have a situation like, I believe it was SummerSlam, if it, with Brock Lesnar going after The Rock. And they did training videos, and they did that sort of stuff. They didn't have them interacting with each other on TV, and it worked. And to not say that when you do it the other way that it doesn't work, but when you do something over and over again, like attacks in the in the uh, in the parking lot, if you're an AEW, the interrupted interview or the the beating backstage interview, like it's been done too much. And when you do that stuff too much, you can do it every week. People become used to it. They kind of blow it off, you know, even if they don't like it. They'll just kind of, like, blindly go through it. But it does bring everything down. Poor Steffi. Every time she comes out, she gets... Poor Steffi, all right. Yeah. Any, anyway, she, her and her dad were in the in the ring, and he was oh, going to give gonna her... going to be quite a review a, tonight. He was going to give her a trophy for something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the good old days. And then... Uh, Shane tells his dad he wants to run Monday Night Raw. <laughs> this is insane. Meanwhile, right. there's gigantic news in the world of wrestling that we're not talking about because we've got to talk about a Raw from 25 years ago. Yes, Granny? Can I stay long enough to hear what the news is? I know what it is. Well, we don't know what the news is officially, Granny, so just tune in tomorrow. No. <laughs> what a crummy show. Oh. Wow! What do you want me to do about it? What the... If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.